Hari. So welcome to India's first love conference with Ishq 104.8, your favorite radio station, which plays 24 hours non-stop love songs. By the way, we're also going live right now across social media platforms. So hello to my friends across that screen. And uh, don't you worry, you are not going to be missing out on anything because you can comment below and tell us your questions that we can include in the panel discussions today. Now that uh, we are going to begin the conference of Ishq 104.8. She hosts Heart to Heart every night, 9 to 12. Hey guys, make some noise. <laughs> yeah, what's up with that? Can I have Naisha who does experiments in our love lab every morning, 11 to 12. drive every evening 6 to 9 p.m. Meha! Look at that dog! <laughs> now I have Kabir who plays your favorite playlist on his Ishq jukebox every 2 to 5 p.m. What a stunner, right? Right here! <laughs> right here! Can I now have Kathy who has come all the way from Delhi and she hosts Ishq in the city in Delhi 11 to 2. A big round of applause for Radiant Red. But we, we like the hugs here. This is how Bombay does it. All right, guys. Now, these are the people also, um, actually, I forgot. Uh, this is also an art. <laughs> yeah. Hi, this is Gunjan. I host Midnight Crush every night, 12 to 2. And I also host Ish Top 20 every Sunday. Thank you so much. And now that we know that we talk about Ishq, love stories, break up so much, so before we begin this conference, I want to know from you people in one line, what does love or Ishq means to you? Let's start with Meera. I really feel like saying, love is Mother Teresa, and then somebody give me the crown. <laughs> okay, um, but love, I think, is that tingling feeling, that excitement, uh, when you're unboxing an iPhone for the first time. And with that, I lose my Android listeners. But hey, coming back, you know, so yeah, layer by layer as it comes off, all that excitement, pun intended. Ooh, we like that, don't we? Big round of applause, guys. Yes, that's how I like it. Uh, who do we have next? Naisha. Okay, so um, love is the only reason why poets and philosophers even have a job. They would have nothing to write about. Like, imagine the content they would have. Hmm, valid point right there. <laughs> God, my answer is going to be really boring now. Hmm, Pyar, uh, love is those things. Don't, don't say those things. Don't say those things, please. Because Karan Jordan is a guy and you know. You Mrs. Know. Braganza. All right, all right. I okay, so. Am I looking the part also? <laughs> like, come on, guys. <laughs> okay, so this is going to be a little gyani. Pyar to me is, it begins at self-love. If you, if you're, if you love yourself enough. I think that's where the love begins, really. No, the crown belongs here. Miss India is Meha. Round of applause, you dear. Is it not such a good idea? Oh, is it my turn? Go on. So, are you saving your answer for the end? No, I can yeah, go on right away. I'll give you the best answer. Ladies first, I'm just being chivalrous. Oh. Uh, well, love for me is, I think, the first six months of a relationship. After that, you realize that it wasn't love. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. But if you ask me, I think love would be, I think the best excuse for a second night stand. If you know what I mean, right? I love you already. Come along. <laughs> I got more claps, Kabir. That's right. Okay, prove her wrong. Clap right now. Thank you. You've been lovely right. and have a nice evening. Sold. Thank you so much, guys. What awesome answers to start our wonderful evening. Thank you so much again. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck to you too. There. Oh. He just got carried away. Sorry. Yeah, we'll get to that. All right, guys, there's a mic in your hand. You're forgetting. All right, coming back here. So we are at India's first love conference. Now it sounds, but it is because we mean business. This conference is no lesser than any business or political conference because now the dating industry, and yes, it's an industry because now the rules have changed. It is fast changing. We could tell each other on the face that we like you, but now, 
We swipe right on dating apps. And that's how quickly love has changed for us. So how do we keep up? Joining us today on the stage will be a panel of renowned guests who will help us understand how to do the ishq in 2018, baby. So welcome India's first love conference here where I have the best platform to launch Calling Karan season two, which is bolder than before. Let me introduce you to the guests for this love conference. Are you ready for that? Are you excited for who's coming? All right, let's start with the first one. The first panelist is a woman who lives her life online with a heart and soul. The one and only Malini Agarwal, founder of Miss Malini Entertainment and a social media ninja herself. Malini knows the pulse of today's Indian youth and is here to talk about how and what love means today on digital world. Please welcome Malini Agarwal. You look beautiful. Thank you. All right, the second guest today, our next panelist is unfiltered. She's spontaneous and she is dynamic. Recently, she got married and that was a national surprise. It was so much a surprise that when she put up her Instagram post saying that, hey, I'm married, she got 600 text messages on her phone saying what the F and not congratulations. Please welcome Neha Dhupia. <laughs> <laughs> All right, are we ready for our next guest? Yes. 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 That's how I like it. He's our hardcore, uh, actually he's not hardcore. It's actually no secret that this man breathes romance. You know, he has the ability to make you in fall in love over and over again. He is the rock star who clearly understands love from the times of Leila Majnu to the love Ajkal. Please welcome Imtiaz Ali. The next guest today, he is in the real sense a roadie who likes to be unconventional. But his love story is rather a classic one. Now, did you guys know about that? He met his uh, wife at a friend's party. Flames ignited between these two sober party lovers and then began their love saga. Welcome, Ranvijay. <laughs> but I'll give you some hints, though I don't need to, but let me start by saying that he's a director, he's an actor, he's a producer, he's fashion police, he's the best pouter, and recently he also became a fortune cookie writer. He is industry's 3AM friend, just pass aakar hota hai, har problem ka the end. Please welcome India's most loved radio host, the winner of Indian Radio Forum Awards 2018, Karan Johar. Okay, so you guys look lovely sitting right here, but excuse me for making you stand up again so that we can have a quick photo op for the media here. Oops. <laughs> yeah, yeah, come. Can we come a little closer? Find out. Yes, sir. Uh, like 500 of the same. Yeah. We should do a calling <laughs> thing. We should be like calling. Oh, yeah, calling? We should be like. Okay. Yeah? We're calling you. Who you calling? Okay, I don't know. <laughs> you don't know. You, you can't.
can't do it. You can't do it. We're calling you. Ah, I'll be here. Ah, come on. <laughs> Guys, we'll have more opportunity. Fantastic. We, he will. Yes, yes. Okay. All right. All right. Fantastic. Let's do that. So, no doubt. Carlo. Man, go forward. <laughs> Wow. I would have felt otherwise. You want your shoe? Those are great shoes. Jute Kincho. All right. Thank you so much, guys. Time to now begin the love conference. And can I please have Malini Agarwal to take over the session? Thank you so off. much. Thank you. You've been wonderful. I can't believe we're here on stage hosting a love conference, and I love it because they're two of my favorite things, radio and love. So I'm really excited to be here to talk to all of you, and hopefully you're going to tell me a few secrets, as uh, Karan has probably got some out of you in the past as well. So this is season two coming up of Calling Karan, which is very exciting because I think you've pretty much now covered the gamut of things to do in life, right? <laughs> Now this is like radio is like the next level and it's the theater of the mind really. So tell us a little bit about what made you do it. Um, what made me do radio? Uh, I just feel like I should do everything. Yeah. Uh, and I think I'm pretty available at most given points of time. Uh, being accessible and affable is part of my personality. And I just felt that radio would have a tremendous reach. And I do it for free anyway, giving people love advice. When you're yeah. single for that long in your life, you tend to kind of meet troubled couples all the time. Yeah. Uh, husbands, wives, boyfriends, girlfriends, boyfriends and boyfriends, girlfriends and girlfriends. And I think that I invariably land up giving copious amounts of advice. So I thought, why not get paid for it? I love that. <laughs> Can we give him a round of applause for that? Now, it's one thing to make movies about love, right? And it's another thing to experience love. But giving someone advice is a great responsibility. It is. Right? And in fact, we have a disclaimer right at the beginning that I'm not a professionally trained individual like a therapist or a psychiatrist or you know, somebody. So my advice should be taken at just at that level, knowing that I may be uh, just giving you advice on a personal level and I not authorized to give yeah. you that advice. Having said that, when I give the advice, I don't pretend like I'm not authorized. Yeah. Because I give very, great. very sincere advice and yeah. I've broken a few relationships. Yeah. Oh no, really? <laughs> but it was meant to be. But do you ever give advice that came from your movies? Like there was a, a moment and do you ever reference them and say, this movie may just have No, no, no. What, what we show in the movies is ridiculous. Are you mad? <laughs> you can't, you can't, <laughs> you can't, <laughs> you can't. <laughs> You can't possibly ruin people's life by giving those kind of situations. Uh, those are meant for like PVR, uh, but uh, not for people like when you give legit advice, you have to kind of really get into the center of the situation and then, you know, be very, and I take it very seriously. I take every call very seriously. I really get into it. So that's really important. And now we have a love conference and today's love conference is an opportunity for everyone to actually get to know the people on the stage and really delve deep into their hearts. So Neha, I want to know what is the worst piece of advice, of love advice that you were ever given? From Karan or otherwise? From Karan? No, in general. Uh, no, Karan, I, I have to say that uh, I, I remember calling Karan in season one and uh, asking him this question that uh, Karan, audio, I have... Audio, audio, audio. Audio, check, 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 audio. You better just uh, put it up again. No, it's fine now, I think. Can you hear me? Guys, can you hear me? Okay, great. Um, so I remember calling him in season one and asking him that uh, my question was that um, should I go with a hot guy or should I go with the intelligent guy? And Karan was like, what a stupid question, go with a hot guy. Yeah, what are you going to... And then it's, what happened? Listen, it's intelligent to go with the hot guy. Okay. Very rarely Neha has not heard. Hand mic de do isko bhaiya. Can you guys hear me? No. Thank you. 
तो पहले ही कहा था हैंडल नाउ कैन यू हेयर मी ओह या सॉरी सॉरी नाउ जुहू कैन हेयर and then uh, when i was uh, about to get married the only person i think who knew apart from my parents was karan and i was i still remember i was like lying in his bedroom like that like a lash and i was like karan what should i do and he was like just get married what's the big deal and i was like can you simplify this for me and he said the most beautiful thing i know you know he comes with this humor and all of that but deep down he's a hardcore romantic as much as he doesn't like to admit it he is he likes the idea of it and he said that you know just treat this like the intermission of your life like a movie is and more often than not the second half is usually better and that was the best advice he's given me till date or anybody has given me on love i believe like you said that you asked him whether you should go for someone who's intelligent or good looking now recently you got married and i think angad asked you now who am i considering you you gave her this advice so what is <laughs> you're you going to be talking about now well i'll just say angad is good looking <laughs> i mean it wasn't an either or but he is good looking he is good looking <laughs> and there's a dot 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 the rest of it you can hear on the next he married season. neha i mean do you think i should think he's intelligent <laughs> <laughs> oh i thought that i thought he's going to say that he doesn't worry about anything because the intelligence department is taken care of by me exactly But that's what i meant i didn't know that it was going to be such I, a big I insult because it's a marriage all about balancing things so you bring in the intelligence he brings in the good looks no that's fine i mean <laughs> we'll give both to him <laughs> i love that okay now this is your opportunity before we get further deeper into the love conference to ask karan for a piece of love advice from me yes. intyas is a master of love <laughs> i mean wow. he's somebody who can give advice if you were to ask karan something there are so many things there are so many things i'd like to ask karan about love and uh, some of them are so filmy and mushy that i'd rather just like in middle Go of the night go for it you know me. this audience will love it <laughs> um What's the relationship, Karan? This is a, like a DNM, okay? Uh -huh. What's the relationship between self-love and love for someone else? Oh, what's mm. the relationship between self-love and love for someone else? Karan, do you have to be in love with yourself or not in love with yourself to be a better lover? Let's put it that way. Oh, that is deep, Imtiaz. Uh, I think that, to put it simply, I can only really talk about myself. Is that I'm not somebody who ha who's full of self-love. In fact, I have a lot of self-doubt. I have a lot of apprehensions about myself. In fact, I'm I have low self-esteem issues when it comes to me in a relationship. Uh, that's why I think I tend to give much more to a relationship and invariably land up in a one-sided one because I have too much to offer. I think people who are full of themselves and not full of themselves would be a negative connotation, but who genuinely love themselves and sometimes with good and bad reason. I think they are incapable of extreme love because somewhere love is a selfless emotion. You know, it cannot come with the baggage of your own self-love because then even when you love someone, you're so happy with yourself that you're loving someone that that you carry that feeling into the relationship. and it's all about you and i think a true relationship has to be about us and you not just me you know it has to be about like two people awesome amazing i love that in fact that's what i've heard as well like love isn't what you feel about someone else it's what they make you feel about yourself and there are two differences like loving yourself and being obsessive about yourself there also is a difference you know you could like yourself love yourself is fine but if you're obsessively like all about you like if you're like deeply a megalomaniac or obsessive about yourself it's very difficult for you to contribute into a relationship then you have to call karan then you have to call me <laughs> yeah. i want to i want to ask him another question mm -hmm. you just said that in the relationship that um, in the marriage of angad and neha he's the good looking one right what are you oh. saying about neha then Well, there's a difference between good-looking and super sexy, right? <laughs> like he's good-looking, yeah, yeah. and she's super What sexy. What is that? Well, Neha has immense amount of sex appeal. I think that she does. She's tremendously hot, and from the time that I first met her to the time now, her intelligence is also a turn on. But also, I think her voice and her her, her curves that are invariably covered by tapestry. But uh, she I knew this been. wasn't going to end well. <laughs> But you, ha you're hot, Nia. You have to know that. Thank you, Karan. You have to own it, which you do quite I'm, a lot. I'm shaking right now because I know this is. Are you done? I'm this done. This is turning into a weather show, huh? By the way. Yeah. That was a real compliment. Please, just, just clap. Yeah. Just clap. <laughs> Well I always ask Neha because she's so gorgeous and stunning why she wears like bed sheets always. Wow. Like I I want to know why she's always bed bath and beyond. 
She wants people to imagine stuff. Yeah, I suppose. Mm. Okay, we have to move on I to like Ranvijay that. now. As I cover up a little more. <laughs> <laughs> So Ranvijay, your uh, Instagram is just adorable to follow. Now everyone would think of Ranvijay as this really macho, just like out there, roughing it out. But his Instagram is filled with the most adorable pictures of him and his wife. Yeah. And even their story, I think you met where none of, both of you That's were not That's my wife you. posting for me, by the way. <laughs> She's got your pass. I believe you met when you were both at a party and neither of you were drinking and that's how you connected. Yep. So, so how, you know, how does someone like you, who's really like got all these girls running after him, find that one and have this beautifully cute relationship? Because that's what all girls are looking for. I'm from Punjab. Um, and uh, we've been brainwashed since we were young that if a girl's from London, you say yes. <laughs> um, she's actually somebody who didn't know what I did. So in your question, you had a part where you said girls running behind you. After about 10, 12 years of being, uh, doing what I do, I didn't know the agenda of women. I didn't know why they liked me. Was it my humor? Was it uh, my chivalry? What, what was it? Because they didn't even, I didn't even need to do anything at times. And <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Modest. And, and then, then there, was, there was a time when I met this girl who uh, didn't know what I did mm. and started liking me for that present between the two of us, right? And over a period of uh, months, she liked me for who I was, and uh, it was very refreshing. And uh, for me, I didn't even want to get married at one point, and when I met her, it just flipped, and my mom was like, I <laughs> <Aww. laughs> You know, so it, that's that, man. And uh, we connect on different levels, and we're, we're also, uh, like you said, I'm the adventurous guy. She's just the opposite. She would never step into a tent. She's the luxury kind. So we are showing each other different, uh, different things in the world. And I think that's why we're so attracted. And it's like, uh, you know, opposites attract. I love that. And I'm sure you've seen so many variations of love stories, especially when people call you, right? And it's amazing that you're going to actually have a second season. Everyone knows the show is bold. You're super honest with people, right? Yeah. But what was like the one call on Ishq 104.8 where you were like, oh my God, I, I don't know what to do. Like you were stunned. Uh, there were a couple of really, um, really strange calls. There was one man who called me and said that he had a, a, a girlfriend who he broke up with because he found a really hot girlfriend. Uh, which this was, is your advice, basically. No, so this is what he told me. Yeah. yeah, maybe it was my advice. So he found someone really hot, and he said, "Yeah, sab kuch theek ja raha tha, baat hot hai, lekin wo baby girlfriend jo hot hai, wo nahati nahi hai." Oh no. So I was like, "Huh?" He said, "Ha, wo bilkul nahi nahati." Or maine bahot baar usse deodorant diya, shampoo diya, sabun diya, bahot saare hint pass kiye, lekin she doesn't have a bath. Maine usko tip tip barsa pani bhi Google pe ya YouTube pe dikhaya ki nahati hui dekho kitni khubsurat lagti hai ladki, lekin phir bhi uske baawajood she was not having a bath. So that he had a very big problem that she was just not bathing. And uh, he said, what do I do? I said, Chhod do. I said, what do you mean, naati nahi hai? How can you be with someone who stinks on, on a daily basis? So he was like, ha, I jab kiss karta hu, to badbu aati hai. Or ye. So I was like, to bilkul chhod do. I said, kyu chhod diya tumne pehle girlfriend? He said, ye hot nikli hai. I said, hot what? Bhul jau, hot ka kya fayda agar gandhi hai? So uh, he said, so he said, okay. Then he was the only follow-up call I got at the end of the season when we did the finale. He called and said, Are, thank you. I left them. I've gone back to my girlfriend. At least she has a bath, you know, and I'm happy. <laughs> so I was like, chalo, very good. So I was quite perplexed initially because you don't realize. And there was this daughter-in-law who called me. She just got married. And she said, I've lied to my mother-in-law that I'm vegetarian. Uh, because actually, he said, I chup chup ki office mein chicken office. <laughs> so she said, but once from my dabba, the mother-in-law has found this haddi. Uh, of the chicken, it was lying in the vegetarian dabba. So the mother-in-law's of course thrown this big fit. And she said, what do I do? So I said, what do you mean, what will you do? You either choose chicken or your husband, no? one of the, no, you, are, you must be loving one more than the other, and then you decide. She was really, so there are problems like this that you would imagine are really not very large problems, but to them, it's the end of their life. Like they were like, what do I do? Then of course there are the emotional ones, and the ones that there was, there was even a boy who rang me up and it was quite, I mean, heartbreaking when he called me and said that, you know, Are, I've got married, but I'm not interested in my wife, I'm gay. So I said, then why did you get married? Mm. So he says, no, but now she's getting upset that I don't want to have sex with her. So I was like, obviously she's going to get upset. I mean, she's going to blame herself that you're not, she's probably feeling all kinds of, you know, issues in her head. Mm. I said, you go and tell she said, no, I'm going to tell my mom and dad, I'm going to tell my heart. I said, what about your wife? 
I mean, like, you know, so there are also those Sorry. grave situations that you address and handle those emotionally. Some are whack job calls, but some are also really intense, serious situations. It's amazing that people are genuinely calling, you know, otherwise they'll always call with that one question, I'm in love with no, my No, a lot of people, like, ask me and say, oh, are these made up? I'm like, not at no, all. These yeah. are legit calls with people with real issues. And the fact that they're talking to you, it, you feel obliged to give them the right kind of yeah. advice. Yeah. Also, uh, can I just, sorry, yeah. because it's radio, it's easier for people to just call you and be truthful. Because yeah, yeah. you're not watching them on television. That's, that's the kind of things that happen on like TV shows and stuff like that. You can't really sometimes say yeah. the truth. So that's why that, that medium is so I effective. I it's hysterical. Like some of the calls are just like, there are thousands. I mean, we don't have that kind of time. But like I get shocked. Like every time I put my, like, like literally my headphones off and I'm like, I can't believe that these people have these issues. <laughs> like it's really crazy. Has anyone ever called you back and said that, you know, because you gave me this advice and I took it, and now everything has gotten sorted. Have you had a case like that? No, 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 I mean, a couple of them in the end called and thanked me for the advice. Like, while talking to me, they're, they're all saying, oh, thank you, I never thought of that, and I feel very great about myself, that I'm giving some but after, after applying it in their lives? After, yeah, of course. You know, but has anyone, has anyone also blamed you for the advice that you've given? <laughs> Actually, that, I think the, 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 they don't allow that access to come to me. I'm sure there are many of those Thank as God. well. In clearly, fact, clearly he's yeah. had a great track record and that's why we're launching season two. Yeah. yeah. No, but I'm telling you, the, uh, yeah. <laughs> Like there was this man who called me and he said, yeah, my mother doesn't leave me. She's always sitting on top of my head and I just bitched the mother out. And I was like, you know, and then after two minutes, she said, Are inse baat karo, mere ma mere saamne hai. And I'm like, why the hell are you calling me and asking me to give you advice about your mother who's clinging to you and whose mother sitting there? And she's saying, kaise laga mere bete ka problem? I was like, kaise laga hoga mere bete ka problem? She must have told him. Clearly she hasn't left him even then. <laughs> I'm like, what kind of mad people are there in this world? So, Imtiaz, everyone knows your, you know, the relationship you have with your audience of making these beautiful love stories and these characters that you create. Now, in this modern day, now you've got a Lela Majnu coming, the modern version. So, what's going to be that story? What's different about this Lela Majnu? Um, about Lela Majnu, I guess um, you watch the film and then I'll ask you this question. But I think about young people. Uh, the most common mistake that all of us make is to think that they just want to have fun. I feel more and more that the younger generation, the every, every coming younger generation is more and more interested in finding meaning. It's like, you know, so many people reach out because they, uh, they just want something to hold on to. What was fun for the previous generation is not what they're looking for in their relationships. Um, that's, what I, that's what I feel. I think that's been a big revelation for me. And uh, uh, in Laila Majnu, of course, there is, you know, the fact that a, a classic love story is eternal and it is relevant far more than, you know, the short lives of people like you and me. So that's the aspect that I wanted to explore about Laila and Majnu because, and I do not obviously cater to the view that Pyar Pehle Zamane Mein Hua Karta Tha, Ab To Sirf Tinder Hota Hai. And that's the thing, so now we're in the age of love, you know, love in the age of hashtags and love and people are swiping right and they're doing all of that. So I'd love for each of you to give a piece of advice to this audience that is, you know, probably stuck in this phone trying to find the love of their life, you know, which we kind of come from a very different generation of finding love. So Ranveer, would you like to begin? Um, when, um, before I met my wife, they want, they want these apps um, where you find people. Uh, today, because I because we interact with a lot of young people on the shows that we do, for th for us to meet somebody, we had to have a conversation or work on a set or in an you know you need to meet people to know whether you like that person. Here, people are just looking at people and doing this. We're like on a website, like products. Oh, I like this. I I don't understand it. For me, a relationship of any kind, friendship, love, anything has to happen, like. We're human beings, we're supposed to interact with each other. So I just, I don't understand. And I'm, we're not away from that generation. We're in the same generation. It's just that, like he said, they think they just want to have fun. Right now what's happening is you're so busy in your life. You have so many events. There are so many cultural things happening in India. Uh, you have so many places where you can watch content that you don't think you actually need uh, physical compatibility. You're busy with your video games, you're busy with your phone, their social media. But when these things die down, uh, the, the thrill and the frill of these things, you actually need a human being to share and discuss your emotions. You can't do it with 
the TV or the screen. And that for young people is difficult to understand. They will, that is what people say, with age and experience and time you learn. If they could learn from what we're saying, it'd be great, it, sooner the better. But I've seen a lot of kids just, oh, I'm just having fun, I'm just having fun, and, and suddenly you're 35, and you're like, everybody's not as lucky as Neha and Angad. Well done, really. In fact, Neha, I'd love your perception of this and your experience of it, you know, because like Ranveer is saying, you're kind of crossover, you've been on social media a lot, and you actually use social media to announce your relationship. But what is your advice now, looking back at the way people also reacted, and would you share it again, and what's your advice? Um, you mean share the fact that I got married? I'm sorry. I think a combination, a piece of advice to everyone about love, and then this is interesting that people reacted to you this way with the yeah, 600 messages. No, I mean, I'm, I'm sort of, I'm not saying that we're a different generation. Of course, we are the same generation. We're, we're sort of 10 years too early. That's why we enjoyed the romance and 10 years too late because we're not on those online dating apps. Now, the thing is that I've got nothing against it. People are using it, people are busy, their lives are their phones, and if everything is pocket content, why not dating? Now, here's the thing, if they don't have time and they wanna put themselves out there and if they wanna meet new and interesting people, why not? The question is, will I be able to do it? I don't think so. I'm, I'm a lot more sort of old school, orthodox, and I feel like it somewhere takes the romance out of it. But then when I hear stories saying, um, I, I asked people, how'd you meet? And they were like, oh, we met on an online dating app. And I'm just like, that's great. So there's, a, there's a different kind of romance, but I feel like, you know, it's like online shopping and then you want to touch and feel a product before buying it. I'm the touch and feel guy. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's literally that for me, <laughs> if you know what I mean. A <laughs> picture being created in everyone's minds now about, Angus. what about you, Karan? Uh, <laughs> I'm just telling you about Karan's shopping. He's an online shopper. <laughs> yeah, but for clothes. <laughs> for clothes. <laughs> and shoes. <laughs> and shoes. I mean, of course, on calling Karan, you're giving everyone very specific advice for their problems, you know? But if there was a generic piece of advice for this swipe right generation, what would it be? I mean, there's so much advice is very specific to a situation. But what I always say is that, you know, don't be worried about, break, uh, about breaking your heart or a broken heart. Because I think that there's something very strong about like even a broken heart. It can empower you in so many ways. And I think we get so terrified of like being heartbroken or being hurt. And that sometimes you stay away from the possibility of a relationship. Uh, but I I feel it's fine because you know it could like I said earlier it could completely empower you and uh, sometimes when something breaks it solidifies you to a larger extent and I think that I would tell anybody like just jump right into it yeah it's fine so what if you won't get reciprocated with the same amount of love so what if sometimes the intensity doesn't match yours but what you will go through that feeling of love that you will feel it will nurture you in many many ways yeah no and, and I absolutely agree with that and you have to go through those experiences otherwise you never learn how to learn love better until you have enough heartbreak. You'll never really improve who you no, are. I think you haven't yeah. lived. Like, I think, yeah. I, I think actors who haven't had broken hearts don't perform the way they should. I mean, you know, I feel like go out there, just if you're a good actor, you must have had a broken heart. It's not possible yeah, otherwise. For you to kind of depict a certain amount of emotion on celluloid, sometimes your eyes do depict your heart story. And, you know, I think many of them whose eyes speak volumes, they've been through that journey in life. Absolutely, and you can see it, you can feel it when that happens. Now you might get a call from a young budding actor saying, Sir, I'm in a relationship, how do I want to make my heart a good actor? It should happen, and I'm telling you it's happened, and I'm sure Imtiaz knows exactly, you know, the, what I'm sort of talking about. He's directed such amazing actors, and I think he's made such beautiful emotional narratives that you know that when an actor hasn't been through, just is touching the surface even in a scene, you know that the feeling hasn't come. Feeling nahi kyunke kaan se aayegi, feeling history se aayegi. And we also know that some people are actually, some actors are trying to go through that experience yeah, to become better actors. Effect, yeah. Yeah. I think many of them actually do that purposely sometimes. I think yeah. they, they traumatize themselves only so that they can perform better. And you know what I've always wanted to ask you, what happens next? You know, we always see the happy ending and we get to that point. And then, you know, the end credits start rolling. But what happens next? What happens after, happily ever after? And that's, I think, the piece Kids. missing. Kids. <laughs> No, but so, so but that's it then, at the end were, of it. If you were gonna, if you were gonna tell the rest of that movie. Yeah, for every movie it would be a different mm -hmm. uh, uh, ever after. Uh, there's no ever after, I think. There's only just a changing scenario all the time. So I think for many movies I do 
have a thought that this is what would have happened and none of them were actually better or so good rather than just putting the, the end where it was. So I am very happy that there was, no, there was no time that you saw what happened in the relationship between Geet and Aditya that is in Jab We Met. Sure. What happened in that relationship and uh, yeah, in Love Aajkal and so on and so forth. So it's never better than <laughs> the end. I think the great thing about being a filmmaker is that you can control the narrative to the way you like it. Like I get asked so many times like in Edil and Mushkil, why did, why did Anushka have cancer and why did she have to die? I'm like, she didn't love him. So in my way, I was like, kill her, you know, because, <laughs> because it thing. was, it was in many ways, it was a slice of my life and yeah. I've been through that feeling. And sometimes you just wish that that person who doesn't give you love should die. So here I had the power of doing it. I killed her. You, you know, know? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, want to, I want to ask this question to everyone, if you don't mind. Um, and usually this question, I've, I've had a slight conversation about this with... Um, Neha has a question. So sorry. <laughs> no, that's fine. Um, no, like I've, I've had a little bit of a conversation with Karan about this and I feel he's very bohemian when it comes to, you know, um, this aspect of being in love. I'm going to start with you, Ran. What as far as you're concerned, what according to you is the ultimate deal breaker in a relationship and so on and so Not forth. taking a bath for one, 100%. Sorry? Not taking a bath, 100%. <laughs> Great advice. Um, lying. Lying. You, you do anything and if, if you know that I'm your guy, I'll be there, I'll get you out of the situation or I'll try anything. But if you lie to me, then I'm not your guy. Simple. Uh, my intention is not to spark off a debate, Karan, but would you be okay with that? Like, if yeah, you're, yeah. yeah? I have no problem. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> so I, what I, would be the, <laughs> what would be a deal breaker for you? I mean, I don't, like, a, like, I don't want to, when you said bohemian, I'm not bohemian. I'm just more of a realist. And I think that sometimes you lie uh, in relationships. You lie about, like, you know, sometimes even sexual infidelity, sometimes I should, I feel should not be considered infidelity because sometimes you slip in a moment. It doesn't I, I mean. I want you to, I want it, you to jump it in. It doesn't right mean, this. it doesn't mean <laughs> that you should break off your relationship because one of you, had a sexual moment with somebody yes, else. It, it happened. Does. Okay, okay, question, current, no, no. current. Uh -huh. Question Don't. for you. Why, why, why not? So sexual infidelity will I'm, not... I'm saying it's not, it's situation specific. You have to go into why it happened and if you own up to it and you chat about it, it doesn't mean you should end your relationship. Maybe it was something that you slipped and it happened in a moment and it's fine. Would Things happen. If it happens, don't lie about it. Let the other person decide what right. has to be done. Yeah, but, but don't lie about it. Sometimes you have to lie also. Would you be okay? Not <laughs> always. Sometimes <laughs> you have to lie. Here's the thing. If, she li if my wife lies about how many pounds she spent on a shoe because she doesn't want me to be upset with it. Oh, no. That's that, okay. That's clever. That's, that's not smart. Lie. That's actually smart. The, these, like my mom and everybody says, are white lies. It's okay. But if something like that happens, the first so for thing... For example, let me give you a situation. She meets like um, an old friend. Hey! If she yeah. meet, suppose she met an old friend. Hey. And someone, suppose, <laughs> suppose someone Suppose she met ways. an old friend and they, they had a vibe and they just spoke but nothing happened. And you know, she had whatever and whatever. And you said, what did you do tonight? And she said, nothing. I stayed in. Now that is, she didn't do anything. So she, why should she lie and break your heart for no reason? Because she nothing happened. She should tell me she had a vibe. She no, should but tell why? Me. Why are you let becoming me, this Justice Chaudhary? Because <laughs> next time I won't send her there alone. No more vibing. Are <laughs> nahi You also you even you you are allowed to vibe once in a while. I tell her. No, I think so, so. But this satya mein jayate now that we can't come back now. <laughs> <laughs> this now. We can't. Okay. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna pass this on to Imtiaz. I'm gonna pass this to you. I'm gonna come to you, Malini as well. So it would be nice if you come to Malini. She's meant to moderate this session. Oh, I'm sorry. No, go for it. It's a good. Not question. you. It's a good question. It's a good question. Uh, no, go for it. I'm. Yeah, you go ahead, go ahead. Okay, sorry. <laughs> so, Imtiaz, <laughs> lying, sexual infidelity, or is it something else? I think the only reason, the only deal breaker is the fact that you don't want to be with a person anymore. Correct. I was just going to say that, falling out of love. Yeah, if you fall out of love, then that's the only deal breaker. Deal Everything breaker. else, like whatever, you know, floats the boat, I feel. Sometimes things that you think mm -hmm. you will not pardon, you do. Because you get to know the specifics of them. Sometimes you think that things are not important, but then when it happens, it becomes important. I think ultimately, if I were to ask myself honestly, if I want to be with a person, I be, I'll be with her anyway. And have you ever been in love with someone but still cheated on them? No. Okay. I, do, I don't think it's possible actually. Why? 
not. If you're in love... <laughs> I love Karan. <laughs> you yeah, should have season if 12. You have that, if you have that instinct, <laughs> if you have that instinct, it has not happened. I mean, I, you know, I would have liked my life to be richer in those aspects, but it's not very. So, um, the few examples that I can think of, it hasn't happened to me and I don't think it's possible. Maybe it is and I'll tell Karan, Karan. Help me, but Are not hota yet. Yaar. I'm telling you, you're a very role model type of people. I think there's a mix of it, right? <laughs> yes, Malini, a, please. I'm, honestly, I think there's a, there's a fine, I, there is a fine line about uh, infidelity, but I think... You tell us, respect, Malini. It's yes, respect. Malini, tell us. What? Yes, yes, your theory. Respect, we want to know. Respect is the most important thing. Once the respect is gone, then it's over. What? You disrespect... No, but you respect... I'm married. So is that it? There's no respect. Ask Ranvijay, there's no respect. There's no respect. I know. <laughs> Ask Priyanka, I think, no no, I think in, in some layers also disrespect publicly, publicly, right? It might be that you have certain things that you've gone through, you've had a relationship which has gone its, through its ups and downs for reasons. But I think as soon as you start disrespecting the other person publicly, that's when you, that means that you just don't care. So is it okay to disrespect behind closed no, doors? No, I think if you're able to have the conversation, if you're, I think that at some point, if you are not, like Karan is saying, if something happens and you're able to work through it, that's different. If you're just saying, well, you know, deal with it, my way or the highway, that's different. Karan? I mean, I have all kinds of theories on relationships and I think to sum <laughs> this all up that you'll find okay, well, all now. kinds, you'll find all kinds of perspectives and, and I respect everyone's opinion. I just feel like I've spoken to so many couples and so many relationships and I feel like we get very virtuous and very judgmental immediately. But like dive into the situation, find out what the details are, what happened, where the infidelity source is, why it happened, talk about it. There may be an inherent problem, discuss it. Don't end the relationship and walk out just because it's like, you cheated on me, I'm leaving you. It, it's not so simple. You know, Eventually, there is a lot more. everyone has their and own. And we live in the yeah. gray. We don't yeah. live in the black or white, we live in the gray. All of us have grey thoughts, grey actions, grey lives. And we cannot be judgmental of others. Fifty shades, they're big. Yeah, we are many. Not the way Fifty Shades of Grey has it. Um, uh, but, I mean, we are like a thousand shades of grey. Each yeah. one of us sitting in this auditorium and okay. on stage. Karen, com coming back to the show. Okay, I know that in season one you had some incredible callers and you also had some celebrity interaction. You, so, do, what was your most memorable? Uh, none, nothing really so memorable because uh, one talks to celebrities at a given point of time. So it's not that I was like, oh my God, this one called me. Uh, uh, <laughs> because like I wasn't jumping out You're of my... You're breaking a heart. Oh, please. Yeah. Yeah, we, yeah. we all called you. Thanks, No, God. I wasn't really jumping out of my undergarments when I got a call from a celebrity. But I was like, great, Nick Neha called. And I, I think you asked me a question, didn't you? Yeah, I asked yeah, you a you question. Did, yes. yeah. So it was wonderful. Thank you. Uh, and uh, we had lots of amazing callers. And I had uh, Sid, Varun, and Ali also acting cute and asking me very <laughs> millennial love questions, which was fun. There were lots of those kind of like people, but it, there was nothing memorable. But it was a lot of fun. I'm what sure. What was memorable for me were the real life callers. I mean, I'm that sure, to yeah. me was amazing. Are you ever going to use those situations? Do you think in a film? Lots of them. Yeah. I can't tell you, it opens my head up. I would tell every filmmaker to get into that room once and just listen to those people and their problems because truly, Imtiaz, and I say this with all earnestness, the kind of people and the lives they lead and what they say is extremely, like, enlightening. But it must but be really exhausting because it's a big responsibility. That's why you I can't do it for very long, no, because you're yeah, really exactly. getting into each call. It's like you're playing therapist, yeah, yeah, psychiatrist, yeah. mother, father, agent, everything. Yes, yeah, you're just kind of like saying everything like, you know, to them and you take back some of their problems. Sometimes the heavy calls can really get to you as well. And you know, I think if we're honest, like on the stage, people expect us to never, you know, confess or reveal anything about ourselves. So I'd like everyone here, and I'll do it as well, make a confession. You start. <laughs> we'll see the degree of confession also. The degree of confession. Confession kiss bare mein? Like about what? About love, something that you've experienced. Hmm. Okay, I will start, I will start. So one of the things that I am guilty of, and I think it happens in social media a lot, is actively stalking exes. And I think, yeah, right? How do you stop? And I think, so a lot of people have actually asked me as well, saying, you know, I see this person, I try not to look. It's impossible, right? You can't go around blocking everything they do because it's going to pop up and it's going to hurt. I think the thing to remember then is that there's somebody else's problem. Now the problem is, and my confession is, as while I was talking an ex, I accidentally liked their picture. Ooh. And then I had to unlike it. So this whole process is very obvious to everyone. And then there's no explaining that. Ex explain. Okay, no. Neha, what do you want to... Without bowl. Okay, so all the men I 
dated, I never married, and the man I married, I never dated. Oh, nice. That's the confession. <laughs> all the men, as in, they weren't so many, but. That's a very convenient <laughs> confession to but have. But you're yeah. always or all, you're all the men. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Do you have to wait till the show? I don't know what to say. Because <laughs> my confessions are dangerous. Imtiaz is seeking. I want to say mine before Karan's. Because yeah. after that, it'll Imtiaz's be Imtiaz's like... confession is seeking him. Imtiaz, confess. I'm thinking, I'm thinking. There's nothing... No pressure, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. There's no mistake I have not made in matters of love. Um, sometimes I wish that I was as wise as some of the characters of my film. These are not the confessions. This is, this is like, I'd say them at any time. But I'm not as wise as many of the characters of my movies are. Um, maybe the fact that I don't get this feeling of being in love or understanding this concept at all, maybe I don't understand it at all, is the reason that I make films that are about love. Good and it's not a smart thing to say. It so would be is. nice <laughs> like to hear this applause, but it's actually true for me. Who's gonna go next? Ranvijay or Karan? Yeah, no I think we'll let Karan go last. Yeah, yeah. I have I'm trying to think, I don't know what to say. So oh, many after having said what my problem is in a relationship which is lying. Okay, listen, listen. Um I I hope this doesn't my my does my wife doesn't really uh, follow social media too much. Even if she does something of whatever that vibing was and she lied, I know, like you said, because I'm in love with her, I'd, I'd let her go. That's what I was trying to explain to you. But I, I know for sure she won't. <laughs> I will. Yeah. I've, and it's, that's not okay with her. Because she thinks because it's okay with me to say I'll let it go, it should be okay for her also. But that's not true. But I know in my heart that I'll be okay. With, I won't be okay with it, but I'll let it go over a period of time. 